Well, joining me now at the Future Renting Conference in Cardiff is RLA Policy Director David Smith. And David, uh, we're meeting at a time, well, I seem to say this every time, actually, where there's so much going on in the sector. But I think what's important about these events is that they are specific to the jurisdiction and the law in, in the country concerned. Well, you're right. You, you do always say that. But th there is always a lot going on. And uh, it, I think it, it, it's a good thing in one way in that it shows that government has an increased commitment to looking at the sector. Um, I think it's also a bad thing in a way because landlords have to try and keep up with this and landlords are generally small landlords and it's hard work for them to do so I think government needs to think and try to do things in chunks and try to, to, to make a series of changes together rather than, than, than a lot of little bitty things which is unfortunate. Now in fact in Wales of course that is what they're, tra they're trying hard to do mm -hmm. because of course we've got uh, the Renting Homes Wales Act which, which is still not implemented, it's taking a very long time to implement but it's potentially a wholesale change in Wales. Um, and potentially a, a, a huge deal and, 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 possibly, and possibly quite a good change, but it's taking a very long time to do and the Welsh Government really needs to get on with it now and, and finish that process. Now you've been in the media this morning talking about um, lack of enforcement by councils mm -hmm. and that you feel that landlord licensing programmes actually don't uh, really contribute to raising standards. Um, do you feel that way about the Rent Smart Wales programme? Well, we've not studied Rent Smart Wales and we'd have to do more research on it. We certainly have a lot of concerns about it. It, it took a long time to get going initially. There are a couple of areas we're a bit worried about within the overall structure of Rent Smart Wales. I think it, it's, it's, it remains to be proven that it actually is doing something substantial in Wales. It's hard to identify any particular policy that has been created as a result of information garnered from Rent Smart Wales. It's hard to point to any specific improvement that has occurred due to Rent Smart Wales. I'm not saying those things don't exist, but I think the Welsh Government needs to make its case, mm. and probably pretty urgently now. I think these conferences, they, they're almost like a barometer of everything that's going on in the private rented sector and different speakers highlight different issues. Of course, there's Section 24, concerns about Section 21. Um, but I think one of the, the key things that will come out of today is um, universal credit. We've got government minister here, which is fantastic for the conference and the landlords here today to be able to engage with him in this format. But, um, you know, universal credit, massive concerns, is government listening? I think finally they are starting to. Um, universal credit, again, is a tough one. Some of the rationale is not a bad idea. The idea that people should take more ownership of their benefits, in principle, is not a bad idea. The difficulty is that you have to have some leeway in that, because there are some people who are never going to be able to do that, and the government has been very bad at having that leeway initially. It's been very bad about thinking about things like direct payment and try to avoid doing it. It's finally starting to come round. But it's taken too long, again. Um, they should have listened at the start. The very fact they're listening now shows that we were right when we said this before. Um, they should have engaged more and, and, and be more open to sensible criticism at the start and worked faster and harder to sort it out. I don't think realistically they're going to reverse this policy now and it will probably cause more damage to go back now. We probably have to see it through. But I think government really needs to put, put a lot of effort into to resolving the problems and really reducing the time it takes to make those initial payments. Seven weeks is, I think, where we are at the moment. It's still too long. If the government keeps saying it's meant to be like the world of work, I have never had a job where I didn't get paid for the first two months. Mm -hmm. And I suspect I probably wouldn't take a job where I didn't get paid for the first mm -hmm. two months. And I'm sure most other people would feel the same way. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and you know, in this world of media and also the social web, it, it is all the unfortunate stories that get highlighted. Indeed, today, um, and you've commented uh, for the BBC on this, um, we've heard that a letting agent has been charging tenants for viewings. And unfortunately, these small minority, well, it's always the case that they bring the rest of the sector into disrepute. Um, and we see this commonly happening but with the effect of social media it seems to be being amplified even more. Yes, um, I, I, that was a case in London but I'm actually told that uh, there are agents doing exactly the same thing in Cardiff. It is an offence. Uh, they shouldn't be doing it. Um, I think however part of this is, is comes down to two things really. Again, insufficient enforcement. This mm -hmm. should have been rooted out a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but trading standards officers are quite blind to the sector. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and also, of course, the government needs to think very carefully about the tenant fees bill again and, and tenant fees changes without thinking it through. And that's not to say that the government shouldn't ban tenant fees. They have the right to do that if that's what they want to do. We don't think they should, but they, they have their choice to make. Um, but the problem is that if you do things like this, then you have these knock-on effects that people try to find a way around tenant fees by charging yep. for viewings. Yep. So you potentially just move the fee somewhere else. And it's really important that the government really thinks through what they're trying to achieve here and how they're going to achieve it and whether this is the right mechanism and, and whether they're not just going to, in fact, move the problem somewhere else. P p bad people can be creatively bad. And, uh, and actually, we tend to forget that. Everyone sort of assumes that bad people are just sort of stupid and mm. you'll catch them out. But actually, most bad people are creatively bad. Mm. Uh, they're no less stupid than the next person. Uh, or no more stupid, sorry, than the next person. And we need to start thinking about these creative situations that they're going to do and, and, and make sure we're on top of them in advance. And mm. the government really needs to think about that. Indeed. I think an event such as this, it is putting down a marker that landlords, um, you know, the wider landlord community does want to be seen to be professional, does want to engage with government. This event is very important from that perspective, isn't it? Yes, and it's important to have it in Wales as well. Wales is not England anymore. It's devolved. It's got its own legislative programme, um, albeit with some, some issues in enactment, but it's got its own legislative programme. Um, and Welsh landlords are good landlords, and there are good landlords in Wales, and those good landlords need to come together be seen, be heard and be respected.